morning, my friends. Evening, my friends. Good day, my friends. Depends wherever you live. In whatever day, part of day, time of day you watch this video. Um, welcome to my channel and thanks for... Not thanks for clicking, but... Thanks for... Yeah. <laughs> How should I say? I'm very thankful that you watch my video. Let's say it like that. Um, those of you who have watched my most recent video, not a Kerbis Fest program video, it's actually a, about Star Sector, another game, know that I'm making a Kerbis Space program short movie. Um, sorry, it's not finished, and no, that's not it. Today, we're going to not resume my career mode, even though this is where my 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 mission is in, and you see many, 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 many flights. Nope, we're going to play Sandbox. Um, you may have noticed that you can't hear the music right now, which is because um, my recording software doesn't record game sound and mic sound. It doesn't have multi-streaming. Not that it's not the problem. Let's see. Okay. For this video I've installed the Kerbal Engineering Redux. And that is mainly because we're gonna go to the moon. With the lightest rocket you can possibly make. And I'll keep you with the with the actual build process because well, why should I not do? Actually as it turned out it was really, really boring. A lot of trial and error. And took uh, one and a half hours, so... I cut it all out. Sorry, guys. Anyways, you're probably already seeing the finished result, taking flight, and... Probably post me should take over now and start the actual post commentary. The entire gameplay was 36 minutes long, so... For your viewer pleasure, I edited it up as you're probably already seeing it at the launch. The launch vehicle weighs just shy of 25 tons, so I aptly named the video 25 tons to the moon. And that's what we're gonna do. Um, just an overview from the start. During the video you're going to see a few hairy moments, a standard moon or insertion burn, a lot of and maybe uh, mundane stuff for me, probably not for you. And well, it'll get a little bit edgy sketchy on the moon landing, you'll see why. And yeah, let's just have fun and look at our mission, what we're doing and so on and so forth. So after reaching orbit successfully, we play a little bit around with maneuver nodes, which actually took about three and a half minutes, so I cut most of it out. Um, we set ourselves up for a moon insertion burn directly going to the moon. No, I'm not going to spend extra time in orbit. And then we start burning. And now it's time to tell me you, you about the vehicle. I would say it's a five-stage vehicle. It has some liquid fuel side boosters that I jettisoned first at launch, which you probably have seen. It has a center stack, <coughs> which is the rest of the launch to orbit, which is dumped at the orbital insertion. You can see that with the twitchy camera, uh, when the camera starts twitching, blah, tongue twister. And after that we continue on our lunar insertion stage to the moon. Um, which also is used for a couple meters per second of braking. Or, no, no I didn't intend it to break all the way into a lunar orbit. I th Man, damn, I'm not sure. No, I didn't intend it to break all the way to the moon orbit because that's the next stage. This is just a stage that has a thousand meters a second of delta V and a little bit of access, which I'll expand at breaking. And it's designed to land me on the moon, to get me to the moon and a little bit of breaking in the moon sphere, in the moon's, moon's sphere of influence. And after that, the rest of this, the rest of the vehicle takes over. So the braking and landing stage has about a thousand meters a second of delta V. 
which includes a spatter to be of close to 100 meters a second, but not completely 100 meters per second. Um, oh yes, the ascent and return stage has close to 1000 meters a second and has a little bit of redundancy, but all in all, it's a very, very, very tight maneuvering budget, which is why the landing on the moon is especially hairy. <laughs> yes, it was. And now that you've been briefed about the vehicle's capabilities, and... Yes. I've told it many times about the hairy landing on the moon. Well, we should go on a bark on the journey to the moon, don't you think? Well, that we do. Um, I don't... Well, after arriving at the sphere of influence of the moon, we're going to have to break. Um, I probably have edited it. As well as the start of the landing maneuver, so Will should be coming round the moon right now. And... Or in a few seconds, more or less. And... Well, you'll see why it gets heavy, because I'm playing Moon Limbo. And if you're playing Moon Limbo, you're gonna have to be prepared to meet the ground, have a date with the ground, or in the astronomers' astronomers' terms, litho breaking. Um, and usually, litho breaking, if it's not soft litho breaking, rocket assisted litho breaking, usually means that your spacecraft turns into a smear on the ground and leaves a trail of nice and shattery explosions. Yes, that's what happened. And Luckily, I quick saved right before we hit the side of the mountain. So, well, let's just try that again. And this time, let's use our engines. And I'd like you to go back in the video just a tad, where we just miss the mountain and look at the terrain altitude indic or readout on the Kerbin Engineering Redux. Then we got down to two meters terrain height height over terrain two meters that was way too close for comfort all in all that maneuver to get us out of to get us out of this tight spot um, also cost us a bit around a hundred meters a second of fuel around a little less that means our spare delta V is used up uh. <laughs> yes, that is why the following landing is done with 0.34 units of liquid fuel spare, or around 3 seconds of hovering time above the moon. Anyways, we get out, we plant a flag, and I want to write what I just told you into the flag, but I foolishly press enter, and so now the flag text is incomplete, which doesn't matter. And thusly, we then take off and you know, start preparing ourselves to return to the Earth, not the Earth, sorry, to Kerbin. It's so disorienting because the Kerbin's moon is called Moon, and I don't have a problem saying Moon because I'm a German and the U. In Germany, is pronounced U, so Mun it is. Or the other thing that, if you have the two dots above the U, then it's Mun. Um, so I always confuse the Mun, the Moon, and thusly also Kerbin and Earth. Anyways, there was a nice time filler for arriving at the Earth and. Now let's watch the spectacle of Free Antli, which was totally non-spectacular and totally non-eventful. So, from the mission executive standpoint, great success, very, very tenacious moments, but a largely uneventful flight, which is what you tend to want. Unexciting missions are the best missions, because, um, yeah. They go off. They go to planning and not to. Uh, 
Um, tough luck, disaster, or just random events. Anyways, with that, wording the outro, it's left for me to say. My name's Fort Plains Kerman. It was nice to be your host. Have a nice day. Bye.